Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a hot minute since I've uploaded anything. I'm sorry for that. In my previous video, I said that I had some really exciting changes coming to my channel this month. Zach and I decided we're gonna try and have another baby. Woo! <laughs> Yay! Even Zach said, did your boobs get bigger? I just pretended I had no idea what he's talking about because I definitely think I'm pregnant. I knew it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I knew it. I, I told know. you. I know. I knew it too. <laughs> We're gonna have another baby. We do. Hey, mommy's tummy. Mm. There's a baby in there. There's a baby in mama's tummy. There's a baby in mama's tummy. There's a baby in mama's tummy. You're gonna be a big tummy. sister. Are you gonna have a little brother or sister? Gonna be a dad of two kids. Baby sister. Oh, baby sister. Is that what that is? Go touch the baby. What? What about a baby brother? Can you touch the baby? Oh. You want a baby brother or a baby sister? Baby sister. You do. Okay. Well, we'll see. We don't get to pick. Sister. You're gonna be such a good big sister. So excited. We are just pulling in to my first ultrasound. As far as we know, I'm about seven weeks along. I think you're earlier than oh, no. seven weeks. Oh, really? Well, that's what it looks like. So I don't see a fetal pull yet. And usually that shows up about six weeks. So. Yeah, how are you? Good. Um, so, so sorry to tell you, we don't see anything on the ultrasound again today. Mm -hmm. So especially when it reaches that three centimeters, it gives you the diagnosis of a failed pregnancy, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so basically what this is also called as a, um, like a blighted ovum where the pregnancy formed but nothing formed inside. Mm -hmm. And so it's just the genes that match up properly. Nothing that you did wrong or, or could have prevented. Um, it's just nature's way of taking care of things early on that nothing is compatible with life. Sorry to have to tell you that, you know, what's happening. You have a couple of options. You don't have to make your decision right away. Um, usually your body will eventually miscarry in the next couple of weeks. Um, but sometimes people don't want to wait until that happens. And so we can either do a procedure to remove the pregnancy, um, called a DNA. and e Basically, you would go in, um, be put to sleep, and I remove the pregnancy with the, with the suction. Um, or you can do some pills I can give you a prescription for that you can place vaginally and um, uh, miscarry at home. Um, that's another option as well. And then you would avoid surgery, but then you'd be at home, you know, with the cramping and bleeding until they pass um, some tissue um, for a short period of time. And then with both procedures, um, you're, you can bleed two to four weeks afterwards. Okay. And then after you um, I'd rather go the medicine route. Okay. Um, either naturally or the medicine, but okay. um, is there any drawbacks to doing that? I mean, you said the cramping. The cramping and bleeding, so you definitely have more pain. You can do um, ibuprofen. I give you a prescription for Tylenol with codeine as well that you can take uh, for the pain. And typically the severe pain uh, typically lasts um, usually less than 12 hours where your body's really trying to pass the majority of it. Well, I've been really just sick, like really nauseous. Okay. Um, and so it's just, yeah. it's been hard to live a normal life, you know, because yeah. I've just been have... so just exhausted and fatigued. So I just want that to be over if, yeah. <laughs> if it's not for a reason, you know. Right, and that's what's hard is mm -hmm. because you still have those symptoms of pregnancy, mm -hmm. but at the morbid size, your body, you know, still thinks there's pregnancy. Be right. And that's why the sac forms. Um, and your hormone levels are high in your bloodstream, but not deformed inside. So okay. I know it's, yeah, because you're still having all those symptoms. And, yeah. And then we can give you some nausea medicine too. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, we can definitely do that. And then okay. once you pass things, well, that's, those symptoms should subside. Yeah. Hopefully quickly. Yeah, t typically, yeah, within a few days. Okay. Yeah. You're, you know, after you pass, the, the, actually the hormone levels can still stay positive for two to four weeks afterwards. Um, but they will um, decline down. Okay. Yeah, does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. See, this is pretty good success with doing the, the side attack okay. yeah, with early pregnancies. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm sorry. I have to tell you this. Oh, it's really hard. Um, but nausea medicine, pain medicine, and then that side attack. And then I'll see you back on Monday. But you call 
before if there's any trouble with anything. Okay. Okay. This is a lot harder to film than it was in my head. <laughs> I've literally sat down to film this video so many times, but it's been really hard and it's just been so... In my head, I've been, it's been easy to get out. I had, of course, the usual telling my husband I'm pregnant, the live pregnancy test, like my reaction, um, all those exciting videos that us mom YouTubers love to film when we first find out that we're pregnant. So I had all these ideas for surrounding my pregnancy for my YouTube channel, of course, because that is what my channel is all about, is motherhood, and I was so excited to bring you guys along for a pregnancy journey. So on September 30th, I took two pregnancy tests and both were positive. And of course, we were all super excited. Rosalie's reaction was so cute. All of us were actually really shocked. It happened really fast. So when you've had one totally healthy pregnancy like I have, and I literally had nothing go wrong, once you get that positive pregnancy test, you start to plan for a baby in nine months. You start to mentally prepare, you start making the decisions, decisions surrounding how you're gonna go forward with the rest of your life with two kids. And, and just being the total optimist that I am, I was expecting to have a baby in nine months. Of course, I had countless lists with names and all these things. I was just so excited to have another baby. I had plans to how I was gonna tell all of our friends and family. I had plans for the gender reveal, all of it. But then on October 16th, we went to the doctor for my first ultrasound and I just had a really bad feeling the moment we got started because the nurse who was doing my ultrasound, the lady doing my ultrasound said there was no fetal pole and she knew that there should be a fetal pole if I was actually seven weeks along like my uterus was measuring. So all the while my body was changing for this pregnancy, my uterus was growing, my boobs were huge and super, super sore. The bloating was out of this world. The nausea was unbearable. I literally could not live my normal life. It was actually worse than my first pregnancy in that respect because I, I was basically in a catatonic state the whole month that I knew I was pregnant because I was just so sick. I was, I only threw up a few times, but I just couldn't do anything. I was exhausted and so, so nauseous. I literally stayed in my pajamas all day, didn't go anywhere all day for a month, and I just stayed inside, and that is not like me. So, I've not been feeling my, like myself at all, and I was basically just in survival mode trying to take care of Rosalie, and not even, not taking care of myself at all. I took a full month off from the gym because I was so sick, and I barely even left the house. And taking a month off the gym is a very long time for me. I rarely take a whole week off the gym. So we were told to come back a week later for another ultrasound to see if the pregnancy had progressed at all. But unfortunately, the ultrasound showed that the baby had stopped growing and there was no heartbeat. Immediately after leaving the doctor, I picked up the prescription that she gave me for misoprostol, also known as Cytotec which is used to induce a miscarriage. I'm not gonna go into detail about the actual miscarriage itself right now. Once I had found out that the pregnancy failed, I really just wanted to move on, but that's just my personality. I was ready to feel like myself again because I had just been so sick like I was talking about and just not feeling like myself for such a long time that I was just ready to feel good again. And I'm happy to say that I really do. This week, I've been able to go back to the gym. I, my first day back was yesterday, and that's really just a part of my routine that I'm used to and kind of getting my eating back on track too because I've just really been eating everything I want. And I don't feel bad for that at all. <laughs> so that's why later on that day after receiving the news that the pregnancy had failed, I went forward with the miscarriage that same day because like I said I was just ready to move on. Did you pee? Tomorrow marks two weeks since my miscarriage and clearly since I'm filming this video it means I'm ready to talk about it. You might be wondering why I'm even bothering to share something this emotional and vulnerable on the internet with some strangers, some not, but I'm sharing it for a few reasons. Number one, because no woman should have to go through this alone. By sharing my story I'm bringing awareness 
and opening the door for communication, honesty, and community. Feeling alone when you're grieving, especially, is really, really hard. But by not staying quiet about this miscarriage and the pain and emotion surrounding it, I'm hoping to gain community and gain friendship and make my channel a safe spot for people to come talk about pregnancy loss. And, and I don't know if I've ever shared on my channel before, but I feel like my personal gift is emotional encouragement. I feel like people often gravitate towards me to talk to because I'm a great listener. Maybe not so much a great speaker, but I'm very good at listening and responding, in my opinion. But that's because giving people emotional encour encouragement sets my soul on fire. That's something I feel called to do. Another reason I wanted to share this is because I literally live my life as an honest person. Like, I, I thrive on being honest. I. You know, I just hate t keeping secrets. I'm just someone who lives their life openly. That's just how I am. And I feel like I'd literally be keeping a secret by not being open about my experience and by not sharing. I feel like I'm being dishonest, not being myself. Because YouTube is such a raw platform and it's a face-to-face -face interaction, really it is, um, it's the most authentic platform, which I really love, but it also means that you can't come on here um, trying to be peppy when you're really not, because right now I'm grieving. Even though things have been so much better, that doesn't mean I'm going to be able to show up as the person I usually am, because I've changed a little bit, and this is always going to be a part of me. And I want to be able to be open about that, so that's why I'm sharing. And of course, I know there's still so much to be thankful for. I'm so grateful that Rosalie's still too young to really be disappointed and be sad with us. She doesn't know what's going on. Um, she's forgotten about the fact that I even was pregnant. She doesn't, she doesn't comprehend because she's only two and a half. I'm also so beyond thankful that it was an early loss and not a late term pregnancy loss or like a stillbirth. I seriously don't know how people come back from that and I just, my heart hurts for the families that have to go through that. So I'm thankful that if it had to happen, it happened early. Thanks so much for being here for me. I want to encourage you to reach out to me if you've experienced something similar. And I hope that by sharing my experience, you feel comfortable enough I had to move to my car because I got sidetracked and then and I ended up losing all my daylight in my kitchen. The sun is setting right now. I want to end this video by letting you guys know that I'll be getting back to my, my normal uploading schedule as soon as I'm ready to go back full throttle, but as of right now, I'm not really sure. I imagine it'll be pretty soon though. Thanks for watching and we'll talk soon. Bye. Just wanna love